Welcome to Dwell in the Word for February 2nd, which is Wednesday, and therefore we're going to be looking at another prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we beseech you, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, we are going to be looking at an interesting story today. We are going to be seeing the continuation of Paul's travel to Jerusalem, and it's kind of a story that is difficult to find a a real point in for our personal application, but it leads us to a speech of Paul's that we will find plenty of things about the gospel in. So it's a transitional story and an interesting one at that. So let's take a look at Acts 21, and we're going to be reading through verse 36. Hear the word of the Lord. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified God. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed? They are all zealous for the law, and they have been told about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the man, and the next day he purified himself along with them and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled, and the offering presented for each one of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place, for they had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd were shouting one thing, some another. And as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the mob of the people followed, crying out, Away with him! So we come to this part of the book of Acts, remembering where we were before. Remember, we had that story that seemed like it was conflicting, like the Holy Spirit was telling one group of people one thing and telling Paul another. But then we saw that Paul was was not afraid of what was coming before him. The people told him not to go because he was going to be arrested. But Paul knew that he was called to go to Jerusalem anyway, and he was not afraid of the persecution that he knew was coming. And so we see this persecution happening in this story, right? We see that Paul arrives in Jerusalem and and they were received gladly. They told about all the Gentiles who were coming to faith and they rejoiced. This was a great thing. But then they started talking about the state of affairs of what people thought about what they were saying about the law. Now, We'll get to the law a little bit uh, further down. Uh, I want to remind us of of a clarification about that here. Uh, But we see in verse 24 that they wanted Paul to do this ritual thing, this this, uh, having the men shave their heads. It was probably a Nazarite vow. And the point of this was to show that Paul was not necessarily opposed to the stuff in the law, But he was simply saying that this is not what saves you. This is not something that Gentile believers in Christ have to do. 
And we get this reminder in verse 25 of the letter that was sent to the Gentile believers that they were to stay away from uh, what had been sacrificed to idols, from blood, and from what had been strangled, and from sexual immorality. And you'll remember back uh, when we saw that in the Council of Jerusalem that I mentioned that those were things that were sort of centered around pagan worship and pagan practices. And so Paul does this. He does this purification ritual, uh, does it publicly in the temple. He's more than willing to do these things to show that he isn't going to tell people they can't do these rituals. Uh, he's just simply teaching that these are not things that save. These are not things that Gentiles have to do. Well, Paul's arrested. Uh, they come together and people are saying that he has been telling people uh, not to keep the law. Now, uh, I highlighted in verse 28 here, if you're watching a video, the law in green. We have to remember, and this is tough for us, but we have to remember that the law that is being talked about here uh, by Luke is not the moral law. Paul is not walking around and saying, ah, you don't need to worry about the, the, the Ten Commandments. You don't need to worry about uh, things like that and, and loving your neighbor or anything. That's not the type of law that uh, Paul has been teaching against. It's the ritual, the rituals of sacrifice, the rituals of circumcision, these things that are not necessary for salvation. And, and Paul wasn't going to tell somebody that they couldn't be circumcised. Uh, he was simply saying they didn't have to be. Remember, he circumcised Timothy uh, because he knew they were going among you know, going among the Jewish people, and he didn't want it to be a controversy. So he's not opposed to circumcision. Uh, but instead, he is just saying that these things are not required for salvation. But the people, people don't want to hear this. They seize Paul. They bring him into the temple. They they say things that aren't true, like this this guy, this Ephesian guy being in the temple and and making it uh, defiled. All this it just stirs the crowd up, and you you can sort of imagine what is happening here. That the people getting so upset and and mob rule reigning. This is just an ugly situation, and we see that he's bound with two chains. The, the prophecy that was made about Paul uh, comes to pass. He is bound. This is the persecution that he knew was coming. It's what uh, was prophesied about him. And we notice as we look at verse 35 that this is such a uh, high level of violence by the crowd that the soldiers have to protect him. They have to carry him, and they're trying to get rid of Paul. And so as we look at this passage, it's an interesting one, and we're going to see what Paul has to say. And as I said as we started, uh, there's a whole lot more to, to look at uh, in what Paul has to say. But this is the setup, and it's quite a long speech, so, so we're stopping here today. But again, it's just a good reminder that Paul was willing to face hardship. And are we willing to face hardship for the gospel? Uh, that, that's, that's tough. That's honestly a tough question to ask, isn't it? You know, if we're inconvenienced a little bit, uh, we probably would not deny the gospel, but uh, maybe I don't need to worry about this today, or maybe I don't need to share my faith with this person because they might be uncomfortable. Uh, but yet Paul knows he's going to be bound. It comes to pass, and he continues. And even when he is um, arrested, we're going to see that he continues to proclaim Christ. He continues to talk about how he has saved a people for himself. And so may we continue to proclaim Christ. May we find ways to teach others, to proclaim Christ to those who haven't heard, to lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ with the good news of the gospel that we might continue to be uplifted amongst one another. May we continue with what God has called us to do, even if we face hardship. Let us go to prayer. Trying God, we're so thankful that you have opened our hearts and our minds to the truth of your word by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you would bless us with faithfulness to your word, that we might witness to the truth of your saving power and what Jesus has done for us. On this Wednesday, we once again lift up to you the missionaries that our congregation supports, both internationally and domestically. We pray that you would bless them with perseverance as they proclaim your gospel where you've planted them to serve. We especially lift up in Getty Children's Home in Kenya. We ask that you would bless the children there with good health and strength. And we remember before you, Margaret, and all the staff that serves you there. Give them endurance and strength in the work that you have sovereignly given them to do. 
And we pray that you would bless us today with a trust that you are guiding us by your word and spirit. As we labor for your kingdom today, may Jesus receive all of the glory. We pray this in his precious and holy name. Amen. All right. Have yourself a very good Wednesday.